Now then, on to today's games, which we haven't really had a chance to look at. And uh, when we were talking about Man United earlier on, we didn't actually look at this game itself. And I posed the question in the intro about Ruud van Nistelrooy, who takes charge of Man United today. He's, he's on record as saying he wants to stay at United. Meanwhile, Amorim brings in, I don't know, anything from five, five. to eight of his coaching staff. Uh, Ruud will be doing well to be putting the cones out. Yes, but you just think a the reception he's going to get today, and the, uh, the sort of the, the mood that he's sort of re-engendered in Manchester United. I mean, they beat a Leicester City no, team, I, which I was their res- I, I, reserves. I, I, they had so much space. Casemiro had a week to to kill that in the I top corner. That. I know you've still got to execute it, but he had plenty of time. I get all that, but there's still there's more of a buzz around because it's because of the way he looked, because of his passion on the touchline. Even some sort of people that think those are sort of superficial elements. I, I thought he was good. So look, in in terms. In terms of his stock being enhanced, even in 90 minutes, even today, particularly if he gets a good result today, he will be of interest to other clubs. I, I agree with you. I can't see him staying with Amorin, bringing all his uh, you know, five the coaches in. What's the point of him staying? Genuinely, what well, is the point of him staying? I don't see this point of him staying. staying. I, no, the point I'm trying to make um, is that his stock has risen and other clubs will look at him. So if he's looked on this, even with hindsight, as auditions for jobs elsewhere, I think he's done well. And what do you think... Amarine will be able to do with all the Dutch connections at Manchester United as he brings in all the Portuguese connections. Well, it's a good point, and it's not simply that. It's if you look at that squad, there's about sort of three or four managers thinking has has gone into it. I think the first port, of course, Anthony goes on loan in January. Be well, who's going got... to do that? Who's going to take him? Well, obviously the, the issues with the wages, um, <laughs> yeah. but but also this is a manager who just makes he develops players, who nurtures players, who reinvigorates them, and he can work with Marcus Rashford. He can work with sort of you know so some of the others and uh, and sort of you know bring the best out of them. So and then, but clearly they need a clear up. But that's why Dan Ashworth has come, and that's why Ineos have actually done well despite the kicking they've they've taken in recent weeks. The fact that they put a proper football structure in place, which has not been there underneath um, the Glazers. What would you be expecting from Man United today? You're going this afternoon. Um, players who are desperate to impress the new man, do you think? Because presumably he will be watching. Um, it, it's, it's a curious one, isn't it? Because even if they lose, everybody goes, oh, well, never mind, we'll just have to wait till Amarine gets in. Yeah, I mean, it's been interesting looking at a lot of the previews. They're, they're still going with, a, understandably, with a sort of 4 2 3 1 formation. I mean, oh, it's just. has got to change it to 3 4 3 I don't, think, I don't think it will, but I think you've, you've still effectively got, you know, the, the two hard working um, pivots that he likes, but it'll be Casemiro. You imagine Kobe Mainu will, will come in at some point. Ugarte as well, who looked liberated the other night, even though you were quite disappointed. Dismissive of, of Manchester United's performance, I thought he was he was outstanding, and maybe it's because he senses that Amarin, who he obviously knows from the Portuguese connections, um, is is coming in, and it, you know, absolutely the uh, the new head coach, as we should remember to call him rather than a well, manager, which is quite significant. It, it is significant, very significant, isn't it? Because it sort of yeah. means, well, if we don't want one of your Portuguese players, uh, then he's then he's not coming. Yeah, and I mean, to, and you'll have to. You know, suck it up. But but also, what happened with Ten Hag? You know, he spent two hundred million pounds since it looked pretty clear that he was going to leave the moment that Ineos started talking to other other coaches in the in the summer. Um, how many of those will will stay on? I think now you've got someone like. Um, Dan Ashworth coming, obviously Omar Parada, Christopher Favell as well. You know, there's a, you know, there is a football structure in place, and they will be looking at the Jason Wilcox. They'll be looking at the uh, at, at recruitment. Recruitment clearly has to be better, and he will be part of, of that of a recruitment committee rather than being the man who initially, dictates. It, immediately, we're talking about his star striker as being the one who comes over. Like before, it was Rasmus Hoyland. He's got to come in now, and now we're talking about another man, Greg Perez coming over to Man United yeah but in what in, in nine in months summer. time and, and the, there's quite a sort of chunky release clause on that I mean Rasmus Hoyland give him a chance I mean he's a, you know there's a good player there if you fill him with more confidence and more pace around or better service then uh, that you know then he he, he may mm. fly so a bit, a bit of a test for United today against a Chelsea side who are a lot more trouble these days especially in the league although there were some really angry Chelsea fans during the week who made the trip 5,000 of them all the way to St James's Park to watch them basically chuck it in yeah I mean that was there was some by the way there was some great away travellings in the week I, I mean I just phenomenal like Liverpool fans going down yeah. to Brighton and you know sort of all over anyway but I mean that's just the, the loyalty of, of fans but you feel like Chelsea almost should say to the fans look I know you're going to take two days off work I know it's going to cost you a fortune but just be aware 
I might not be taking this one too seriously. Yeah, but a manager's not going to give away I know, his but team it's unfair advance. on the fans. Yeah, Especially no, as at St James's Park, you're up in the gods anyway, so it's not the greatest view, is yeah, it? Yeah, by the way, have a word with your club about that, because they're supposed to, be, supposed to be pitch level on the Premier League That is guidelines. definitely not pitch level. That's, That's more not, like moon it's, level. <laughs> it's cloud level. I mean, you could see Norway from there. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, but, Chelsea anyway. Yeah, but, but general, point Chelsea on, on Chelsea. League. Yeah, point on Chelsea. Really interesting piece in the Observer. Jacob Steinberg, uh, on page 12 of their pullout. Just looking at why Murray Moresco, low maintenance, but very meticulous in his in his work. Why he's he's had such an impact? Because we've all sort of looked and depicted the sort of you know the perceived chaos off the uh, off the pitch. But actually on the pitch, they apart from defensively, you know, Dzazi and, and, and individuals like that, they've got to improve that back four. But he's made strong decisions. I mean, I don't understand why Enzo Fernandez was made captain anyway. But he's he's dropped him. Mm. And he's got Romeo Lavia in there, who is, who is, you know, I mean, as as Jacob describes him, press resistant, disciplined Romeo Lavia, who's who's playing alongside Caicedo, and they're they're a terrific double. Act. They've also got Cole Palmer, who is just outstanding mm. at the moment. Now then, the two o'clock game is Tottenham Aston Villa. So, what have you made of Man City's bogey team, Spurs, this season? You see, I like Ange, and I know there are issues with with defending set pieces. I like his uh, his his approach. Um, the attacking approach it echoes with what Tottenham want I quite like the, the changes he made you know that was a bold decision to take off Madison the other day and move mm, Kolosevsky Kolose- more, more more central and it worked it also allows Brennan Johnson more of a free run on the right but every time Tottenham you think oh they've turned the corner here they're, they're going to get on a roll they come unstuck and of course you can easily come unstuck against Aston Villa definitely because they're so well organised brilliant goalkeeper good defence players working hard Ollie Watkins outstanding oh, a manager who John changes Durano. what in terms of his mood or in terms of well, his that, impact uh, off the bench great player he's, yeah. he's proved to be a really good player but I, he's quite volatile yeah, but you know, Emery seems to be able to handle that which which I quite like I mean it'd be interesting to see what happens in the summer and you know he'll he'll obviously want to be starting but you can't push Ollie Watkins out of the team at the moment do you think we're taking Aston Villa seriously enough I mean do you see them well first of all are they title contenders and then secondly should they be making it into the top four and th- should they be progressing in the Champions League where they've started absolutely brilliant top of the league I mean it's, it's short. I mean <laughs> what they're top of it was it 24 team league I mean it's, it's not bad I mean they're, do, they're doing fantastically um, they're not title contenders but they're absolute Champions League contenders in terms of finishing in the uh, in, in the top four again it's interesting actually with what Villa are doing and with what Forrest are doing it's sort of reigniting Midlands football again Midlands has always been a a hot bit of football but doesn't necessarily attract the big headlines so they're not often say the back page leading the papers or the top of the websites and stuff like that yet they get phenomenal crowds both those sides are former European Cup winners yeah. yet don't necessarily command the attention and we've been told off on here before uh, which maybe the other some of the other teams do well I mean I live in the Midlands East Midlands but if you go over to the West Midlands I mean you look at what's happening at Birmingham City not simply their form but all the sort of you know the razzmatazz and you look at the ground now and the sort of you know the improvements I've been down to the training ground I mean it's extraordinary the Tom Brady imprint on it mm. the sayings from Tom Brady throughout his career you know all the, the seize the day type rhetoric um, so yeah there, there is a buzz around hey, there, I which is in, good I worked in Derby as a, as a young reporter and Derby is football mad it's a phenomenal football town i just wonder it's interesting to see whether we could be seeing this amazing resurgence in midlands football which has been a a long time i mean derby for instance former former title winners as of course with forest and villa and leicester city not that long ago but they come in leicester are dipping a, a little bit at the moment but you know they get good crowds you know, there's a. I think he's a good manager. I know one or two of the they fans have issues. With Steve could be. He's, he's a good manager. But they commanding big crowds, and I, I think. So why are you surprised that there's 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 football in the middle? No, it's just I always think that, and it, I must fault as as well that they they don't command. As I say, the back page headline, the first spread in your paper, the top of the website. Well, you're responsible They're, for that. No, you're no a I, I am editor. partly responsible, but I wonder. But now, of course, you know it's not an Forest in third place. You think right? It's time to. Well, I'll send you a map of the Midlands and then no, with, no, with you, the clubs on you them. Are as, you will be as guilty of this as, as yeah. anybody as well because it, it, it takes them a big push. Now they've got two teams 
sort of really doing. Well, come something. and live in the Midlands, Sean, and you'll realise the passion for, no, for football you? there. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. On AM, on DAB, via the Talksport app, and on your smart speaker, Talksport.